you are a library author, you might want to make your Java-based or callback-based library easier to consume from Kotlin using coroutines and Flow. Or maybe, if you are an API consumer, you might be willing to adapt a third-party API surface to coroutines to make it more Kotlin-friendly. In this video, you will learn how to simplify APIs using coroutines and Flow, as well as how to build your own adapters using suspend cancelable coroutine and callback Flow APIs. For the most curious ones, those APIs will be dissected and you will see how they work under the hood. OK, let's start. Before writing your own wrappers for existing APIs, check if an adapter or extension function is available for your use case. There are existing libraries with coroutine adapters for common types. Future types map to a single one-shot suspend function in coroutines. With the suspend function, you can get rid of callbacks since the coroutine suspends until the result comes back. There is an existing integration for Java 8's completable future. This helper function will wait for the completion stage to finish without blocking the thread. It uses the suspend cancelable coroutine API that we'll explain later. And as a bonus, it is also cancelable, as you can see in the invoke on cancellation lambda code. If you use Guava instead, there is also an integration for listenable future. The implementation is quite similar and also supports cancellation. There are also integrations for reactive stream libraries such as RxJava and Java 9 APIs. You can convert an observable source to flow using the asFlow function, as well as calling completable, maybe, single, or observable sources within coroutines using suspend functions. If you think you need to improve existing Jetpack libraries or Android platform APIs, take a look at the Jetpack KTX libraries list. Currently, more than 20 libraries have a KTX version creating sweet idiomatic versions of Java APIs, ranging from shared preferences to view models, SQLite, and even Play Co. Find out more about them from our previous episode. Callbacks are a very common solution for asynchronous communication. However, they come with some drawbacks. Its design leads to nested callbacks, which ends up in incomprehensible code. Also, error handling is more complicated, as there isn't an easy way to propagate errors. In Kotlin, you can simplify callbacks using coroutines. If you don't find an adapter for your use case, it's usually quite straightforward to write your own. For one-shot async calls, use the suspend cancelable coroutine API. If you remember, the future types extension functions that we saw before used this API. And for streaming data, use the callback flow API. But enough theory. Let's take a practical example and code a little bit. We are going to work together on the code of the Building a Kotlin Extensions Library code lab. It uses the Fused Location Provider API from Google Play Services to get location data. The API surface is simple but it uses callbacks to perform async operations. With coroutines, we can get rid of callbacks that can quickly make our code unreadable when the logic gets complicated. Let's start with one-shot async calls. The fused location provider has the getLastLocation method to obtain the last known location. The ideal API for coroutines is a suspend function that returns exactly that. We can achieve it by creating an extension function on fused location provider client. As this is a one-shot async operation, we use the suspend cancelable coroutine function, a low-level building block for creating suspending functions from the coroutines library. Suspend cancelable coroutine executes the block of code passed to it as a parameter, and then it suspends the coroutine execution while waiting for the signal to continue. The coroutine will resume executing when the resume or resume with exception method is called in the coroutine's continuation object. We use the callbacks that can be added to the getLastLocation method to resume the coroutine appropriately. Note that you can also find a non cancelable version of this coroutine builder in the coroutines library with the suspend coroutine method. It is preferable to always choose suspend cancelable coroutine to handle cancellation of the coroutine scope, or to propagate cancellation from the underlying API. If we check the suspend cancelable coroutine implementation, 
it uses suspend coroutine and intercepted or return method to get the continuation of the coroutine inside the suspend function. That continuation object is intercepted by a cancelable continuation that will control the lifecycle of that coroutine from that point. Its implementation has the functionality of a job with some restrictions. After that, the lambda passed to suspend cancelable coroutine will be executed and the coroutine will either resume immediately if the block of code returns a result or will be suspended until the cancelable continuation is resumed manually from the lambda. Instead of the last known location, we might want to receive periodic location updates using the request location updates function whenever the user's device moves in the real world. We could need to create a stream of data using Flume. The ideal API would look like this. It will be another extension function and will return a flow of locations. To convert streaming callback-based APIs to flow, use the callback flow flow builder that creates a new flow. In the callback flow lambda, we are in the context of a coroutine. Therefore, suspend functions can be called. Unlike the flow flow builder, channel flow allows values to be emitted from a different coroutine context or outside a coroutine with the offer method. Normally, flow adapters using callback flow follow three steps. First, we create the callback that adds elements into the flow using offer. In here, we create a location callback. If the result is null, we ignore it. If not, we call offer to send the location to the flow. As offer can throw, we should grab it in a try catch. Second, we register the callback in fused location provider client, calling the request location updates method. There, we pass in a generic location request, the callback we just created, and the main looper. For the error cases, we can add an unfailure listener to get notified of any errors. If that's the case, we close the flow. And third, as we want this to be an endless flow, we need to wait for the consumer to cancel the coroutine and unregister the callback. For that, we use the await close method. And in its lambda, we can have cleanup code. In this case, we remove the callback calling remove location updates because the consumer is no longer listening for values. If we look at the callback flow implementation, it uses a channel, which is conceptually very similar to a blocking queue. A channel is configured with a capacity, the number of elements that can be buffered. The channel created in callback flow has the default capacity of 64 elements. When adding a new element to an already full channel, send will suspend the producer until there is space for the new element in the channel, whereas offer won't add the element to the channel and will return false immediately. If we now look at the implementation of a wait clause, you see it also uses suspend cancelable coroutine under the hood. It will suspend forever and resume the coroutine successfully when the flow is closed. In the finally block of code, it executes the caller's cleanup code. Flows are called and lazy and specified otherwise with intermediate operators, such as conflict. This means that the builder block will be executed each time a terminal operator is called on the flow. This might not be a huge problem in our case, as adding new location listeners is cheap. However, it might make a difference in other implementations. To reuse the same flow across multiple collectors and make the call flow hot, use the shareIn intermediate operator. Here, we configure it with an application scope that we receive as a dependency. We specify a reply of one to emit the last emitted element to new collectors, and we use the while subscribed started policy to keep the producer active while there are active subscribers. Consider creating coroutine adapters to make your APIs or existing APIs concise, readable, and Kotlin idiomatic. First, check if the adapter is already available, and if not, create your own one using suspend cancelable coroutine for one-shot calls or callback flow for streaming data. In the following episodes in this series, we'll show how to use the Kotlin-specific APIs for popular libraries such as Room and Work Manager. So make sure to subscribe to the Android Developers channel.